This example has come from your revision booklet. There are two cumulative frequency curves shown and we are asked to estimate the median and upper and lower quartiles. We're then asked to use those estimates to calculate the semi-interquartile range. A couple of things we need to bear in mind here. It's an estimate, so it's not going to be an exact value. We're not calculating anything algebraically here. We're reading it from the graph, which is, which is why it's an estimate. We're looking first at um, to see what information is available from the chart. Now, I don't know the context of this data. I don't know what it is. But I do know that my maximum is 120. And quartiles, remember, are the points where we've chopped the data into quarters. So we've chopped it into four bits. So the first kind of calculation I'm going to do for this example is I'm going to take 120 and I'm going to divide it by 4, which gives me 30. Now, I can effectively chop this data into 4 using this information. So I'm going to start with 30. I'm going to go up 30 and just draw a dotted line along to my curve. I'm going to do the same at 60. That will be halfway. Now, oops, I'm a little bit off here because I don't have a very accurate tool. So 60, the next one's going to be 90. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the values of x at these three positions. And I'm going to do that by coming down from where I hit the ogive. So at 30, I've hit here. If I come down, I can see that quartile 1 is approximately 15. I'm going to go to the next one for quartile 2. I'm pulling down here. That's approximately 18. Quartile 3. Oops. It's approximately 20. Quartile 2, remember, is the median. It's the middle value of this list of data. Quartile 1 is essentially the median of the bottom half. So it's the middle piece of data from zero to our median. Quartile three is essentially the median of the top half. So I've been able to read off the graph by cutting my data into four, so there are four thirties and 120, and I've read off values for quartile one, two, and three. Now I'm gonna use those estimates to calculate the semi-interquartile range. And the semi-interquartile range is calculated by Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2, which in this case is 20 minus 15 divided by 2, which is 2.5. Okay, we're going to do the same for the second example here. So again, I'm looking, first of all, to see how much data I have. I've got 24 as my maximum. So the first calculation I'm going to do is 24 divided by 4, which gives me 6. That means if I want to chop this curve into quarters, I'm going to go along at 6, 12, and 18. I'm going to come down at each of those. You'll need to be much more accurate than I am here. Just It's difficult on the screen. And I'm going to read off my values here. Quartile 1, well, I can see that that's about 45, I'm going to say. Quartile 2 is about 60. Quartile 3 is about 70. Semi-interquartile range. 
same thing. It's quartile 3 minus quartile 1 divided by 2. 70 minus 45 over 2, which is 25 over 2, which is 12.5. OK, I hope that's helpful. Go back through and check the main points. First thing is we've calculated our maximum data and we've divided by 4 to see where the quartiles are going to be. We've picked off these values on the graph, gone along until we hit the actual curve and then gone down and read the values of the x on our x-axis. That's given us quartile 1, 2 and 3. We've used these values to calculate the semi interquartile range, which is quartile 3 minus quartile 1, all divided by 2. It's always divided by 2 because it's a semi interquartile range.